Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast, brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, and this is episode 396. We're doing the show live. Twitch.tv slash MMO bomb. If you haven't joined us before, come and join us. We've got chat here. They will chime in with their weekly bombs when we get there. If they didn't put them on YouTube or uh, on MMOBomb.com already, and I'm sure they'll have feedback during the show. We'll be sure to bring that to you. But yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, turn on those notifications, tell your friends if you like what we do. That's the easiest and most free way you can possibly support us, and we would very much appreciate it. Uh, we've got new games new games, and a couple more new games, and then kind of a mini good idea, bad idea segment. I'm kind of not sure where I stand on this one yet. Uh, We'll probably disagree on some bombs when we get there, but joining me to go through all of it, Mr. Jason Winter. How are you, sir? Hang on, I'm looking up uh, birthdays. Yeah, we were pre-show, we were looking up birthdays of famous people that corresponded with people in chat. This is the kind of stuff that you don't, that you miss. When you only watch it on YouTube or the the website, you know. Other than those actors I brought up, July twenty third is kind of crappy. It's like like a pope from the sixteen hundreds. That's about it. Who who's July twenty third? Today today is July. 23rd. Oh, just today's date. Okay, I thought you yeah, were yeah, looking yeah. it up for somebody specifically. Because I was like, do no. we have to wish somebody happy birthday? <laughs> so if today's your birthday. You know, leave it in chat and know that you'll uh, or leave it in as a comment. And you can know that you share a birthday with Pope Clement the eleventh. There you yeah. go. Enjoy. Enjoy. Also on the line, Mr. Troy Blackburn, the noob fridge himself. How are you? Good. Learned today that I share a birthday with Wilt Chamberlain. So thank you, you Jason. Do. Show. You do. You do. And the same year and everything. He's uh, taller than you, by the way. <laughs> it's the <laughs> second time Troy's giving me the <laughs> already. Before we get started with the news, I got a box. I got a box, gentlemen. Box. There's a box. What's in the box? I don't know. So I'm uh, a little... Amazed. I think I know that this is from the Neverwinter team. I know they were sending something uh, for their whole module update with the Bard and everything. Uh, I'm just surprised that it got here as fast as it did because it was like two days when they confirmed my address. So I think it's Neverwinter, but it could be something else. Uh, I don't know. Let's take a peek here. I did take the tape off before the show, but I can't see what's in there. Uh, something black. Yeah, well, that's the foam. Oh, well, that's the padding. padding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay, so it is never winter. It is absolutely never winter. Let me get the foam padding out of here. There's actually quite a bit of it. All right, and we've got another box. We've got a box, gentlemen. A box in a box. I have now. No they they are doing that uh, bard thing that that is coming out. I did my piece on that earlier this week, so check that out on the site. So I think it should be like a musical instrument or something. I think it's going to be a musical instrument. Something bard related, at least. Yeah, I mean, there is no indication on the box of what might be inside. Just a little dragon and the Neverwinter logo. That's all that's in this box, and we'll get rid of this. And prepare for the next box. Prepare for box number two. How does this? Oh, it opens like it's a little flappy box. That's actually kind of a nice box. I like this. Oh, yeah. yeah those are this neat. is a little treasure chest kind of opening on the mm-hmm. front. That is neat. All right, so what is it? All right, so there is a couple things in here. Let's see what we've got. Is there cheese? We've got, I don't know. We've got a steel mug. Mm-hmm. That's pretty nifty. And then I've got a little card here. It says, Greetings, Adventurer. Neverwinter's next major module, Jewel of the North, will launch on Steam, Epic Game Store, and Art Games on the 27th, and on the PS4 and Xbox One this fall. The module retur- will return Neverwinter to its D&D roots by introducing the iconic and expressive Bard class along with major quality of life improvements, including a new streamlined leveling system, which will make it easier for all players to experience the many adventures of the free-to-play Dungeons & Dragons action MMORPG has to offer. To commemorate the PC launch of the module, enclosed in this treasure chest is some epic loot that's fit for a Bard. To learn more about Jewel and North, scan the QR code, etc., etc., so. By opening this box, you agree to pay us right. one million astral diamonds. Right. Oh, uh, so these are two either leather or faux leather coasters. That's what everybody gives us. Like, and they're like, that's like an easy thing to get because I've got, I still got my Mabinogi ones that I still use. <laughs> it's like the little crappy coasters. This one's kind of hard to see what's on there. There you go. If I get it under the light, you can see. Oh, okay. So they're pretty, right pretty nice. I think that's all. 
that's, that's it. Is that it? Oh, no, there was something else in here. It can't have been that just in that box. box is too long for just those. Right? Well, a lot of it Not is this mode. type of stuff. Well, still. Oh. Still. Here is a wooden guitar pick. There we go. There's your music thing. There's the music-related thing. That is really thick for a guitar pick, but it would work. <laughs> Almost as thick maybe as my it's glasses. A, maybe it's a loot pick. <laughs> I'm that is so small, and I almost lost it that I'm afraid there is something else in here, and I I don't know about it. No, there is nothing else in here. Okay. okay. So, steel cup, two coasters, and a uh, a wooden bard pick. Very cool little box from Neverwinter. Thank you from the to the team over at Perfect World Entertainment slash Cryptic Studios. Jason, you actually kind of enjoyed the Bard when you checked it out uh, in your preview. It, was, it, it never was just one of those games where I'm just like, you know, I'm going to get back into that someday. And this is actually the first time I played it in seven years. And now I'm like, well, they're doing the re-leveling thing, so maybe I'll finally get back around to it. Once I get through the Final Fantasy XIV free trial, which I'm going to do at some point, I swear. Then it's like, so <laughs> it, it's, on the, it's on the list. It's in the queue. But the bard actually, was the bard was a little fun. You like that? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. And they have a couple of. I like the little. You, you press tab to call up your little music window. Then you have to press buttons to make music come out and do different effects and so on. And there's even like a free play thing you can do if you just want to hang out in town and belt out some tunes or whatever. But I want to point out to you, you also you got a card, but also so did I this week. Which oh, I actually. So, I got this, which Ooh, is, the, is the invitation from Arena to go see oh. the, uh, the presentation for the expansion. Yeah, on the yeah. So. That's on the and that's next week. Yep. We will definitely have some news for you on that front. On that front. I believe Bird of Chess is presenting that uh presentation. So I don't know. Should be fun. Should be fun. We'll definitely have news. But on that uh, topic, then let's go I over. I got something dude. in the mail too. What'd you, oh, what'd you get? What'd you get? It was it was an electric bill. Oh. Uh, that's not nearly as fun. Well I'll just, take I'll take my coasters over that. I just didn't want to be left out. After Troy said that, I didn't have a segue, so I just hit the news bump. So just, so just go. <laughs> nothing can really follow that. Yeah, nothing can really follow that. Just hit go. All right. Uh, so first up, let's talk about some new games. And one rumor we talked about on a previous show that is now confirmed. Uh, on the new front, let's get this one out of the way first because it's the one we have like the least about. We, we don't even have a, a website for it yet let alone a video to show you or a lot of information. All we know, and we're just kind of guessing that it might be free to play, so there's a shot that it may not be uh, because it is Nexon-related. They are releasing a looter shooter that right now is called Project Magnum. It's not often you see a game title release with the word Project in its title, so this could be a work-in-progress title that they're using right now. Maybe it's the actual name. I don't know. All we know is that when it launches, it'll be on PC and consoles. It has a sci-fi theme. And next, uh, Nexon is saying that it'll be available in most major markets worldwide. That's about it. Skills, classes, abilities, weapons, big bosses, looter shooter. Boom. That's it. Any interest, gentlemen? Any interest? I know that you know, I maybe like looter shooters more than the two of you, but you do enjoy them a little bit here. But obviously, Nexon, a concern, uh, particularly if they decide to go free-to-play, which maybe this will, maybe this won't be. What do you think, Troy? Uh, I think they're stepping into a market that is pretty much dominated by two games, Destiny and Warframe, and... I don't know that there's going to be a lot of players who are willing to jump ship uh, to do their sunk cost fallacy, whether it's fallacy or not, uh, games that they enjoy even uh, to try something like this. Uh, is it appealing to me? The, the word Nexon makes me really nervous. Um, yeah, I would like to find a good looter shooter that's like the one that I love and just keep going back to. Uh, but Nexon, man, mm, I don't know. Yeah, Nexon has me worried too. Like, I enjoy Destiny. I enjoy Outriders. I enjoy the Division, uh, uh, the Division Two. Like, the problem is, like Jason, that type of game, like a Warframe or a or a Fantasy Star Online Two, where the idea is just rinse, recycle, and try to get better and better and better loot. 
the time investment, you know, it's not a game genre that you can just like have six or seven favorites and be doing fine in all of them. The time investment does require you to really pick one or two that you invest your the bulk of your time in. We don't know a lot about this, so maybe it'll impress and turn some heads, but it is Nexon, little shaky, crowded genre, little shakier. I, I don't know what to think so far. I mean, what isn't a crowded genre these days? That's what, true. What game doesn't what game doesn't demand your entire life and, and credit card? So I, I don't <laughs> although on the other hand, I will say that even though they're saying it's a global service, I wonder if this is really just for Korea for the most part. Because that's where mm-hmm. Nexon makes most of their money, Korea and China to some degree. So how how are Destiny and Warframe in Korea? I have no idea. Maybe they're not that great. So maybe this is their attempt to do that sort of thing to bring that to a more home homebound audience. And they'll put in some, you know, shitty uh, localization and f- fling it out to other territories as well, because why not? So yeah, because uh, money we, if they can. Yeah, we might as well make try to make a couple extra bucks on it while we're here. I mean, you may be right. You may be right. We don't know a lot, so presumably we'll, you know, they didn't even send a trailer. Like the press release, it was an actual press release. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't like somebody emailed me from Nexon and said, hey, are you interested? We're going to make this announcement. Here's an embargo. You know, it, no, they were just like, hey, here's some details. And it was like, well, we're, okay, did you forget to attach the details? Because <laughs> there's there's nothing in this press There's like a hundred words in this press release I'm looking at. And most yeah. of it is just, it's as basic as can be. Yeah, it really is. It really is. I'm all for a sci-fi environment, though. Like, you know, I'm looking forward to Aliens Fire Team for that same reason. And uh, maybe a little bit of extraction, although I have problems with Ubisoft as a company. We're going to talk about them in a minute. Uh, that may prohibit me from playing that in any capacity other than to to get you a first look on MMO Bomb and then be done. But yeah, I, you know, let's let's do it. You know, give me a sci-fi setting. But Troy, I'm kind of with you. It's Nexon. You know what? Give give me a weird West looter shooter. Let's try let's try something different. They're all freaking sci-fi. Let's go weird West. A little bit of old West. A little bit of magic thrown in there. Let's let's God. try something like that. That'd be fun. God. Go play Red Dead Redemption. You're done. That's not the same. You're done. You're done. Speaking of the UB ones themselves, uh, who now we're getting more allegations out of, I believe it's their Singapore office uh, reports show this morning of misconduct and things there. I'm sure if you're in the gaming world, you've seen the whole Blizzard thing as well. Doesn't really apply to what we're talking about today, but do want to call it to your attention. These companies are getting busted left and right. They deserve to be busted left, right, up, and down. Uh, So, yeah, Ubisoft. Let me introduce you to Tom Clancy's X Defiant. This is going to be a free-to-play shooter, 6v6 combat in both arena and linear modes. They're going to have a rotation of maps as well. Classes from Tom Clancy Games. So we're going to have the outcasts and the cleaners from the division. Ghost Recon's Wolves, Splinter Cell's Echelon. And that's kind of like their assault, support, tank, healer classes. So very... Very Overwatch uh, type mentality going on here, including the 6v6, which I thought was a little interesting, Jason, that they're keeping the 6v6 and... Even Overwatch, Overwatch is keeping yeah, 6v6. Even Overwatch, <laughs> is, is, is Overwatch 2 moving to 5v5. Uh, first off, can we just say that the name is freaking awful? X Defiant? Like, Man. I hate this name. I didn't think they'd come up with a worse name than Valorant, but somehow they managed it. X and Defiant. Lord, do they love just pasting Tom Clancy's name on anything they can nowadays? Yeah, I'm going to tell you this, gentlemen. They describe this as a a gritty first person shooter wrapped up in a punk rock mosh pit. And I don't know about you, but there is nothing that screams Tom Clancy more to me than a punk rock mosh pit. I mean, that just <laughs> to me. Oh, yeah, that's the first thing I think of. It looks like what they were just trying to do was, how can we make the environment not gray, Jason? I know. <laughs> Let's graffiti all of it. <laughs> it, it feels like they're, they're, they're going like, how do you do, fellow shooter fans? Shooter <laughs> fan kids. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, 
they're trying to be hip, I guess. With and they have the two guys, like they have the Mac and the PC guy talk about it. So it's like, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> talk about the game no one asked for. <laughs> like, well, let I'd, me tell you how I describe this. This is the most generic looking live service yeah. piece of crap I have seen in a long time. Uh, it's just a money grab to try and suck your wallet dry. If Nexon, if the word Nexon makes me nervous, the word Ubisoft sends chills down my freaking spine out of sheer terror. Yeah, and when we covered a few weeks or months ago, whatever, where they were going to get more involved in the free-to-play space, you know, granted, we have, that gives us games, uh, more games to cover, so that's, you know, always good. Maybe they'll hit something nice or something. But honestly, behind the scenes, Jason Q and I were just like, ugh. Uh, it's, it's welcome to 2014 it? ubisoft yeah talk about a company that really doesn't need to get into free to play <laughs> i like one of the comments on the article from what the heckles who says quote we are super stoked i didn't play the audio in the trailer but one of the guys at the beginning there does say that we are super stoked <laughs> and what the heckles says says the same face that looks like it's saying i want to die i'm reading a script with a gun to my head <laughs> Look, you can either go discover the tower that unlocks the next zone, or you can pay us a dollar ninety nine and not have to go there. That's where this is going. Like this is Ubisoft. That's what they're gonna do. Yeah, it's not being well received on YouTube either, Jason. Yeah. It just yeah, isn't like two to one dislike to like. So yeah. Yeah, and generally it's not like you know, hey, this is the trailer's awful, or it's just like there's more of a malaise than anything. <laughs> it's just. Uh... Just people well, some of the comments I, I posted in chat, like of the of the list, are like, hang on, let's see if I yeah, can find my it favorite comment is the same one I saw it, and then Q had said something about it too, uh, and I was like, that is my favorite comment too. It's the one that says, "This looks like." Where is it? I want to get it right. It looks like a game that you would see people playing in the background of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, why it's does like this was scientifically crafted to be as uninteresting and forgettable as possible. <laughs> Ubisoft programmers. How generic do you want this game to be? Ubisoft board. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a Tom Clancy game. A series known for at least trying to be a bit more grounded with its approaches. How should we make art assets for this one? Effing graffiti tags with bright colors and make the main logo just be XD. <laughs> this doesn't look like a Tom Clancy game. It's just like everybody jumping on that idea. It's yeah. The number of times he's rolling in his grave. Mm. Ugh. Not holding out a lot of hope, gentlemen. Not holding out a lot of hope for this one. Uh, Troy, maybe this will be the game you need. No. All right. Absolutely. All right, fine. Maybe just the game you deserve. All right. Maybe. Uh, confirmation of a rumor from last week. Konami's PES 2021 Pro Evolution Soccer will, in fact, be free to play. And, in fact, the entire game is getting an, a whole new rebranding. No longer PES. It's going to be rebranded as eFootball. Because damn, that name is sexy. E football. It is. It is still only the second stupidest name we've heard this week. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Let's take a random word and put a letter in front of it. Okay, sure. E football. E football. But now it is getting a little bit more of a makeover than just hey, now it's going to be free to play now, Jason. It's sure. it, there's a, there's a little more going on here. Yeah, they're completely uh, re redoing the engine. Uh, it's going to be built in Unreal Engine 4. They say there are going to be four times as many animations as in last year's edition. And I watched the video, and they showed the guy doing the motion capture and so on and showing that translating into the game, and it looked pretty good. A lot of the moves where you got the guy, I'm like, doing with my feet here because you can't see that, but he's like <laughs> you know, rolling the ball and getting around a guy, and the guy's trying to stop him. Jason literally doing the moves <laughs> under his desk. <laughs> But yeah, they they do they do look pretty good with how they're doing with those animations. So it'll look good at least. Okay, I'm I gotta say I'm a little worried this ruins the franchise. Like I thought when we talked about this that it would be a smart idea for them to incorporate more than the the currently existing free to play thing they had with you know like PES Lite or whatever it was. Uh, however, I just kind of feel like oh wow they're just you know screw it digital only. 
new modes, free to play only. Here you go. I'm like, where's the ultimate team, noob? Yeah. That's that's where the fees are going to come in. Where's the FIFA like ultimate team type stuff? Uh, I probably just have to because you know Konami's going to do it. <laughs> probably to pay to unlock uh, like matches and stuff too. I would imagine. If you're going to do a live service game, let, let's say this. If you're going to do a live service game, which all these sports games are nowadays, right? Like NBA 2K, Madden, they're all live service games now. They All they want to do is sell you crap. At least there is a persistent game online that's going to be updated for you to keep buying stuff instead of rebuying the same damn game that's every true. year and yeah. starting from zero and still having to spend money in their cash shop to get things well, that you had before. Except... Well, how, how do you know? How does it always go with like an MMO? Oh, yeah, I, I did the expansion. I got the uh, you know, tokens of valor or whatever to get me the dungeon gear. Now we're going to go into a new expansion. Oh, I found a completely different All currency this over time. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, they did so... say in an interview, though, with IGN that there's not going to be annual releases. It's it's just going to be free updates for new seasons as they updates go. Updates that will make you farm with the new tokens or whatever. I don't know. Well, they do say free. They do say free updates. And and from like we don't know a ton about the monetization, but what they did say was like exhibition matches between like nine major clubs. That's going to be part of the free stuff. There are additional modes. Those will be available for purchase. So maybe we won't see anything like the ultimate team if they're banking on hey, I'll just sell Troy a few extra modes if he really wants those, and I'll make a couple of bucks off Troy. But I, I can't... I just... It's Konami. It's Konami. Oh, they, yeah, there's Ultimate Team coming. Don't you worry about that. They were smart to not put that immediately in the announcement. Yeah. They have a little roadmap and everything, but it's coming. <laughs> yep. Mobile controller support, eSports tournament kickoffs this winter. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff. I, I want to see this do well. Because I'm with you, Troy. I do hate the idea of like buying NHL every year. Like I'm paying sixty bucks for what is most of the time not even an upgrade, besides mm -hmm. a roster upgrade, uh, if anything. Which, by the way, throughout the season you were doing that via online updates. Why do we have to do that for the new season? Uh, so I do kind of like this idea, but man, I just think it's going to be rife with just aggressive monetization. I think that's the point is we're supposed to get over the aggressive monetization because we didn't pay for the game in the first place. Uh, guess what? Now, when you start getting into pay to win and gambling, uh, like you're probably going to, then, then nobody wants this. Somebody wants this probably, but not enough. I, I, I gotta, it's weird, Jason. Cause I find this one to like, if you're a PES fan, you probably don't like, if you're somebody that buys it every year, you're probably not cool with this idea. <laughs> like, you're probably just like, could you please just give me my $50, $60 game and leave me alone? <laughs> like, we, we have had this relationship for years, and now you're changing the rules on me. This isn't right. This isn't right. No, no, no company cares about its existing customers as much as it cares about acquiring new ones. Yeah, the next one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it's about. Always. We'll see. Konami also announcing that they are looking at launching a new digital Yu-Gi-Oh! title. A few different Yu-Gi-Oh! titles, but the one here that we're going to talk about the most because we think it probably makes sense for it to be free-to-play, uh, they are going to make Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Now, this is going to be a full-fledged version of the physical CCG. Uh, nothing like the the light one that they have online now. What is it? Uh, Dual links. links. Yeah, Dual Links, which is kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! light. Uh, mm -hmm. This will be an actual full featured uh, adapt adaptation of the the uh, the CCG. I think yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! fans have wanted this for a while, so it's definitely got an audience. But Jason, you seem to think that free to play makes sense on this one um, for a few different reasons including their primary competitor in the space. Yeah, I think this is basically going to be a... It's their answer to Magic the Gathering Arena. Because say it's going to be a, you know, a full-featured game. Not going to have like story or anything like any of the other games have had or characters or whatever. It's just your, your username versus the other guy's username. You're just going to fight and get loot and packs and whatever, and probably just that's about it. If they say they're going to have tournaments, they're going to have all sorts of different events and so on, so... Yeah, I think it is just it is the Yu-Gi-Oh! version of Magic the Gathering Arena. 
Troy, did you, did you play Yu-Gi-Oh at all? I know you've been into some card games. No, I've played uh, a little bit of MTG, but uh, CCGs, as I've mentioned numerous times, are not my thing. Yeah, not, not generally like your thing. Yeah. I, do you think Yu-Gi-Oh fans, though, actually just want you know a $50 box? It, because uh, here's the thing. I'm a Final Fantasy TCG player, right? It, the physical card game. Mm-hmm. I buy a lot of those cards. I don't really want to buy digital packs at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and some games have done some creative stuff there. I know Pokemon does some things like that. Uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, I think it is. Uh, is it Age of Sigmar? I don't know. They, they've they done where you can scan, you know, certain cards that you get in the physical packs and unlock them in your, your digital setup too. Uh, that type of stuff I would kind of like here. But if this is truly free to play, then we would expect that the model is going to be pretty typical, uh, you know, farm up in-game gold, buy a pack here and there, shell out dollars, buy packs that way instead, craft cards or or just buy the cards, like the, the typical monetization. And I just got to say, I would love a full Final Fantasy TCG supported official software instead of having to use like Octagon to play instead. But I, I don't, I probably would just rather pay 40 or $50 and then, you know what, every booster set that comes out, give you $15 to have, all the cards unlocked and and be done than to to do like a Hearthstone does, Troy. Yeah, see, I play LCGs, living card games, and, and it's like that where you just you get the box and everything is in there and you just kind of build your deck out of what's in there. Those are fantastic. It's the it's the random purchasing and the the hundreds or thousands of dollars that you'd have to spend to be competitive in these types of games that really gets my goat and i really can't stand that part of it so yeah man if you could i'll take any of these games if you could just buy a box and build a deck and be competitive uh based on your deck building skills obviously out of that box i'm always for that uh unfortunately obviously there are lots of people out there who love the blind purchase of magic the gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh and all that like they just like opening the pack and oh my god what if this is the one okay well congratulations hundreds of dollars later now you need to spend 250 dollars to get the card you actually need to even have a chance to win a game and jason it is konami and we just expressed concerns with konami and monetization so again i kind of look at it's konami they're probably going to make this free to play and it makes sense i can't fault them for that but I don't know if it's what I would want as a hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh player for this to be a free-to-play experience with all the fees and microtransactions that come with it. So here's a theory I came up with actually in the early 2000s. First of all, I'll mention you two are a couple of old guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when things shifted to Pokemon and that sort of stuff, and Yu-Gi-Oh and a lot of the other like anime and other like card games really designed from younger audience a monster rancher and whatever else out digimon that sort of thing my thought was after like five or six seven years of you know magic the gathering and legend of the five rings and star trek ccg and whatever the people have started to realize that the ccgs are kind of a crappy deal <laughs> for the same reason you mentioned having to spend hundreds of dollars to get the good cards or whatever so ccg developers are like how do we still make money off this i know appeal to kids they don't know any better <laughs> So that's kind of my theory on stuff like that and stuff like this. Yeah, it's not for you, Mike. It's not for you, Troy. You're both adults with a halfway decent income and limited free time. Some kid is going to want to blow two bucks a pack. Yeah, sure. Whatever. I'll do that. I don't know any better. So there you go. But is it really? Like, obviously, yeah, the the Yu-Gi-Oh appeals to kids with the the anime and stuff. like. But when you look at the Yu-Gi-Oh circuit... Of of players in that play it day in day out, week in week out at their local game store and stuff like that. I mean, I, when I go play Final Fantasy, there are Yu Gi Oh tables there, and there are people there. And yeah, I see one or two kids. But I'm not saying kids like eight years old or whatever. Well, no, I, like and I I am. Old. I'm talking I'm like maybe eight to eighteen. I see one or two, but the the overwhelming majority of those players are mid twenties and up. And up all the way to like, I've seen 60 and 70 year olds playing. Uh, and I, I think that is, I mean, there was just a big tournament here in Pittsburgh with like 1400 people. I don't know if it was Yu-Gi-Oh if it was Digimon or whatever. I don't remember which it was, but yeah, there were, there were kids there, but not as many as I would expect for a kid's toy, a kid's card game. I don't know. 
Yu-Gi-Oh fans, let me know. Like, if you play in real life, do you want this to be free, or would you rather just, you know, here's 50 bucks. Great, now I have the game, and I'm all caught up with the last X number of sets, and, you know, I'll I'll toss you 15 or 20 to get a play set of all the next set, you know? I don't know. It seems like a model that would work. Like, it's guaranteed money every three to four months, every time you put out a set. Hmm. Good idea, bad idea, gentlemen. Lineage 2 is making some changes. And I know that's, uh, as Jason said in his article, that's a weird sentence to be saying for a game that is 17 years old. But Lineage (laughs) 2 (laughs) is adding a new server. And before you think, oh, yay, now Lineage is going the classic server that WoW did, that Ion did, that Lord of the Rings does, that... Everybody, EverQuest with its progression servers. Oh, great. We're getting one of those with Lineage 2. Hold, 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 my friends. This one's actually a little bit different, and I don't know if I like it or not yet, so I'm looking for you two to kind of sway me one way or the other based on how you feel on it. They're going to make a little more solo-friendly one, and I'll tell you what, as far as free-to-play games go, if there was ever one that drastically, in my opinion, needed to be made a little more solo-friendly... It was probably Lineage 2 uh, at the moment. All the classes are going to be tuned to focus primarily on solo play so that you don't have to sit there and wait and wait and wait to party up and go grind some stuff. There's going to be solo dungeons. Now, they will still have group content and PvP, so you will still have that, but you won't be waiting around for a party. The 36 classes will be, quote, tuned to be self-sufficient and hunting, There'll be six solo dungeons, a simplified leveling system, making it easier to reach max level, a whole new approach here to kind of get those solo players on board. Jason, I don't know. Good idea, bad idea. I mean, I don't dislike it. Or or let's say maybe a too late idea. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's like, I don't dislike it, but I'm also not going to get into it just because, hey, now Lineage 2 is solo-friendly when I have 800 other solo-friendly MMOs to play out there. Lineage 2 isn't that big a draw to me. It's not like I've always been like, oh, man, I really want to play Lineage 2, but it's just so hard to get into. Yeah, but I just don't have friend, enough friends playing. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, it's nice, but this isn't, this isn't your game. You know, it, it's not what Lineage 2 is. And I just don't think you can teach the old dog new tricks at this point. Troy, I got to believe like this is directly this whole Aiden server. This is directly aimed at a Western market because the game is still explosive big in the East. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't need to do this to attract an audience in the East. This seems like a Western play in my book. Yeah. If you forget the, the lineage franchise, the first game too, and the second one are huge over there. Um, not so much over here. It, is this maybe a move towards picking up some wild refugees? Because they're out there. They're growing every day. Uh, maybe another company looking to pick up some of those. I don't know. I'm with Jason. Uh, welcome to 2021 where your MMO can be played solo. The way the majority of us at least level up and experience the majority of your game until we get to some in-game type content. So so welcome to 2021. Um too bad there are so many other games that are not 17 years old uh, that I can check out that are more exciting to me. Yeah, and we're going to revisit this topic when we get to our question of the week as far as uh, making an MMO primarily for solo play. Uh, we'll talk about that and get your opinions when we get down there to the question of the week. I guess the end result, though, is are you going to play it? And when I try to look at it that way, uh, obviously I will check it out for MMO bomb purposes, whether that's on a stream or we do a little gameplay action episode on YouTube uh, for that or something, you know, I'll check it out for those purposes. But if I didn't have to do that for MMO bomb, uh, would I just naturally play it? And I kind of land in no, Um, you know, lineage Two had its day for me. It wasn't a long day. (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't a long day so it wasn't that day like savings time day where you lose an hour right hard. exactly <laughs> uh it had its day for me and i i just think you know there's too many other things that are i'm not gonna have to deal with the idiosyncrasies of a 17 year old game when i go and play final fantasy 14 or i go and play neverwinter or i go and play you know a myriad of other even free-to-play games i'm just not gonna have to deal with some of the aggravations even though it's been made a little more solo friendly, Troy. And so I'm kind of leaning towards 
not a bad idea, but probably a too late idea. Uh, I, I don't want to say it's a bad idea. I think it's a good idea for the game itself yeah. in a vacuum, comparing it to nothing but itself. But it's probably a little bit of a too late idea for me. Probably so. If you're looking for something that was a little more hardcore, uh, where you needed groups of stuff, Lineage Two was the place to go. But over here, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna jump into it. I played Lineage Two once and knew within an hour that it just was not for me. It was not intended for me at all. Uh, so just being able to solo play it is not going to change that. Chat saying, uh, Old Glory and others saying, yeah, I'll check it out, but probably won't play it. And, and these are like Lineage 2 heads. Like Old Glory is a Lineage 2 fan, has very nostalgic memories of Lineage 2, but knows how heavy party-based it was, so just wants to check it out more out of curiosity. Let me see how much of a difference this is. Jason, I got to believe that this is a a no for you, but do you yeah. slide all the way to bad idea or are you kind of with us? It's, it's a good idea, but you probably should have done it. I don't know. 10 years ago, eight I years mean, ago. Well, on some level, I feel like it's a bad idea just because you, it's not going to serve any purpose. I mean, it's a nice thought to have, but even 10 years ago, you know, there was still whatever Lord of the Rings online and, you know, rift and star Wars old Republic and so on around then. So what would, what would have been the point of it then even? So I don't know. We'll revisit that topic when we get to the question of the week. Last topic before we slide over and do the weekly bombs here. We put up a gameplay action video yesterday for you. It is on YouTube and it is on MMOBomb.com. Go put some comments there. The game page for this is up as well. So if you're in early access, you can go to MMOBomb.com slash review slash space dash punks and leave your personal review for people looking for information on the game. But you can check out the video now. So Space Punks is a, an early access. does require Founders Pack. We streamed it last Friday. I'm going to stream it after the show again today. Uh, checking it out in early access. It will be free to play when it launches later this year. Uh, it's also going to be an Epic Game Store PC exclusive for probably about a year or two. But if you're really averse to the Epic Game Store, you can wait till early next year. It will release on consoles at that point, early 2022. It's an isometric ARPG looter shooter slash twin stick shooter. Like, it's got a bit of everything in there, but it is very go get your loot, rinse, repeat, cycle over and over again with some irreverent characters and things like that. Cell shaded uh, art, very much in the style of Borderlands. Now, the dev team at Flying Wild Hog and Jag X uh, is the publisher. They did say, hey, you know what? We, uh, we don't mind being uh, compared to Borderlands. That's a. <laughs> It doesn't play like Borderlands, though. I, the comparison ends with the art and the art kind style. of <laughs> irreverent humor type stuff that's in the game. Um, it doesn't play like, you know, a first person or a third person shooter. It's an isometric ARPG. But I've had about a week in it, and I know we kind of talked about this a little bit uh, a while ago. But now that you guys have had, you checked out the stream... Uh, you now have the gameplay action video. I want to see how you guys feel about this because I know Jason off the bat, you were kind of like, this is as, you know, generic as can generic can be maybe not bad, but probably not great. And yeah, people will like it, but it won't be hundreds of thousands of people. Oh, I, I thought you were going to keep going, but, no, um, no, I'm yeah. done. <laughs> no, okay. All right. Uh, I mean, I watched your first look, or your, your, uh, why, why, why wasn't it a first look, first of all? They're because it's in uh, early access, and there is, if, shit. if, if you watch the video, money. there is a ton of stuff that is clearly labeled as work in progress, work in progress, work in progress. There are a so lot of placeholders and clearly labeled. You're, you're, you're getting soft, Mike. You're getting soft in your old there, age. That and there's, you know, I can't really do an official first look for something that doesn't have its cash shop at least functional yet. Uh, okay, that's true. Okay. I, I mean, right. that even the cash shop was a work in progress. You could see the menus for what will probably be sold, but there was no products right. or pricing or anything like that. I mean, the more I see about this game, the more I see about this game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's uh, the more times I watch Avatar is the more times I watch Avatar. <laughs> I don't know. I still think it. I feel bad because I'm looking over the topics for today too. And like we haven't said anything nice about anything, <laughs> and and I feel bad. But I'm just like, well, I mean, look at it. X definitely. No, this is definitely a game that exists. <laughs> I'll say that about it. <laughs> what don't you like about it, or is it just like 
run of the mill for you. There's nothing you like about exists. it, but there's nothing you hate about it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what are you, the Ubisoft board now? <laughs> How generic do you want to make this? Yes. 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 Do they have financial goals for this early access? <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, they <laughs> can't possibly. You want to bet they don't? You well, want to bet they don't? Well, I mean, the, the only way you can get in is by buying a founder's pack. You uh, may have a certain and, number of those they need to sell. And that's it. You have to sell. That's it. Well, I, I mean, I guess. That'd be pretty harsh, man. And it is Jagex. They got, what, hundreds of billions. We don't know who has it and who owns them. But <laughs> we got, they got hundreds of billions. Uh yeah, I, honestly, I'm I'm enjoying it. You're never gonna play this again. Well, and and I said that in the gameplay action, I was like, "Look, I'm enjoying this. I don't know if it would be something that I jumped into every other day, though. It would probably be a spot here, spot there type deal at best no, right won't. now. At best, <laughs> I was very candid in the in the gameplay action about that portion. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing really to hate right now. I don't think Troy. It's you know. It's fun. It's a game. It my, That's what it's it supposed has, to be. It has my attention. Um, well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I would assume so because it. you liked Magic Legends, and yeah, look at how that panned out. Oh, yeah, right. And um, this is ARPG, stagnant camera. Your character's actually centered. I mean, the, the abilities aren't <laughs> random. <laughs> the, the list of pros just keeps going up. So if we weren't in the middle of New World beta right now i would probably have bought a founder's pack just to check this, this out this, this is the exact thing it's like if there weren't 83 other games i want to play i would totally play this one it's just there's anyway i'm sorry go on keep going go on now here, here's nexon on the what what scares me list right and here's 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 ubisoft so jagex is like so here, here's ubisoft jagex is like right here. <laughs> like, <laughs> really like uh, wh why though like, really, the only huge free-to-play reputation they have is with all the different runescapes, and generally, those because are... Because what they put out is generic crap other than that. They're just a bunch of junk. Outside of runescape, you mean? Outside of runescape, Yeah, yes. okay. Okay. That's fair. But, like, why are you worried monetization-wise? I'm just worried this is going to be generic crap, and it's just, you know, one gameplay loop, and that's going to be the end of it. Like you said, right now, you, you're enjoying yourself, but you don't know you're going to come in every day and play it. Yeah. Well, oh, I, no, no, no. I know I won't. It, it will not be an that, everyday yeah. game for me. It just if won't. If they don't add something more interesting than one single go out and gather loot, get better loot, go back to the base, there's got to be a little more than that to it. Why? Why? Oh, Warframe on, does fine with that that's model. That's boring. Warframe does fine Yeah, but fine Warframe with introduces new maps, new game modes. So does this. They, 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 went from, so does uh, this. they went from linear to big open world type maps. Like, they've got a lot going on. So does Fantasy Star Online. Go out and do the same thing over and over again Ooh, until the next content online. update. You and your, what a, what a homer. These, those Fantasy games do Star fine. Online. They do fine. <laughs> Why couldn't this one? Why didn't Magic Legends? Because you're because that was just ill-conceived from moment gameplay. one, and we that was ill-conceived from moment one. No, I don't think Magic Legends' problem was just generic gameplay. Plenty of games have generic gameplay and just do fine. I, the Magic Le Legends had some ill-conceived notions from minute one, and we said that as soon as we saw certain things. I don't think this falls anywhere near that bucket. You know what you're talking about? Playing mouse and keyboard and not even be able to see the name of your abilities is a fantastic idea when they're RNG popping up on your screen. Exactly. And this game fixes that by before you even see the title of the game, it says, for the best experience, use a fucking controller. <laughs> <laughs> before you even see the title screen, this game tells you that. It tells you that right off the bat. I don't know. There's, I think there's a little fun to be had. I will agree with you a little bit, though. I played Devil's Advocate, though, uh, there for a little bit, Troy. But it does feel a little more on the shallow end of the pool than something like a Fantasy Star Online 2 or a Warframe or a Path of Exile where you're going to be on that loot treadmill doing the same or similar things over and over again. There is a campaign. There are a few, but it's also early access. I don't know how many different features will end up in the full release. Uh, like you can only visit a couple of planets right now. The, the other ones are on the map, but you can't go there. They're work in progress being built and stuff like that. So it does feel a little bit shallow now. I don't know how much of that to attribute to early access and availability of stuff in game, or that's just all there is in game yet. That's why it's not a, an official first look or anything like that yet. I don't know how much to attribute to limited <laughs> early access. 
Um, I want to play it and I will play it at some point for sure. Like it, it's definitely yeah. interesting. The art style, uh, twin shooter, ARPG style, like that sounds fun. It's fluid as all hell too. Somebody said that in chat and I do want to point that out. Old Glory said that. Yeah, it is. It is fluid as all hell. Uh, Bob by far is the best of the four characters. Uh, I, I love him. I love Bob. My little bug guy. He's awesome. I almost died here in this fight, but I didn't. This was me. I don't playing. know how you have like no life. I saw. That I, I had one life, and I keep dodging to get my until I get my shields back. <laughs> yeah, I had at one point. I I must have had like two hit points left there. You can't even see the bar. Hmm. Uh, but this is on uh, hardcore difficulty too. So. Ooh, I'm yeah. Special. Yeah. Pro yeah. gamer here. Uh, speaking of other little games, we didn't do a video for it. Jason was considering making a video for it. You played Infinite Lagrange, which is kind of like a space strategy uh, game on stream and then decided not to do a video on it, but wanted to give you a chance to kind of chime in with your thoughts uh, on, on that game. Again, I wish I could be saying good things about something today, but you know. Hopefully uh, you give a, a da bomb. That's all. Hopefully you give a, a, a da bomb. Okay. <laughs> uh -oh. Um. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's in the damn notes, man. And man, uh, and what the hell? <laughs> I'm like building suspense and like creating intrigue and... <laughs> you know my mood today. It's just my mood. Anyway, Infinite Lagrange is a mobile game, basically. That's on a PC for some reason, I guess, because NetEase wanted to get the PC audience, I guess. But it's it's basically timers, timers, and more timers. Uh, which you can, which you can, yeah. Now, when I played, I streamed it for almost three hours, and I generally had something to do, so I was not like just sitting waiting for the timer a whole lot. First of all, part of the reason is they give you a lot of little speed up things you can use to speed up your timers, which actually regenerated at a decent enough rate that I never ran out until like the so very end. So you get end. addicted to them, and eventually they will not regenerate, and they will sell them to you. No, they'll always regenerate. It's a question of how long it'll probably take to make something. My stuff was in like the. Stuff I was building is generally in like the 10 to 15 minute range. You could use one of your things to chop off five minutes. So you only need one or two to, to really get it going. I'm sure later on stuff's going to take like an hour and you're going to be, I want to spend 12 of these, whatever. They regenerate at the same rate. It's just a question of how many you'll need eventually. But otherwise, I went around, I mined some asteroids, I got more stuff so I could build more ships, go out and kill some more uh, enemy ships out there. And that was basically up upgrade my base to various levels and so forth, do all the little missions. And that was basically it. Do that so, over and over. So is it like I when I saw like the just the descriptions of the game, I thought this might be one Jason likes. You know, he he does like the strategy games. He, you know, we we've talked about like Dreadnought and stuff like that in in space. We we both enjoy that type of stuff. Uh, obviously, I didn't like watch videos or on it. I'm going just by written descriptions. I thought oh, maybe yeah, Jason, will, maybe this this will be Jason's type of thing. But it sounds like it's more idle clicker than like in depth strategy. If I'm hearing you right. Yeah, and and it's like they've got this very large like play area. I don't know how to put it. Like there was a there was a star system in the middle, and like whenever you could you could start in any like this asteroid belt around the system, so you can go around and then you mine the different asteroid fields or whatever. And I could see when I zoomed out the map, I could see there were other players with their bases around too. Now I had like a three day or a four day timer that I was safe in. So I know that if I leave this game for like a week or two, I'm going to come back and all my shit's going to be destroyed. <laughs> it's one of those type of games, I think. So like a very so clash really of want... clans in space type thing. Yeah, well, and if you wanted to, you know, really gotcha. dominate this stuff. Or they, I look at their news, they open a new server like every second day. So it, that's classic like Chinese PvP game tactics. So people can get in and be on the leaderboards and be the top guy because they're spending in the cash shop and getting all the stuff to do whatever. So <laughs> then Japan just says, oh, so Rust. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, yeah, it's one of those kind of games. So, if you're into that, hey, I mean, go ahead. But uh, I mean, so I would probably rather play it on like a, a boring game. ass video. It would make, so we yeah. decided not to make a video. Troy, what the hell were you streaming yesterday? What was that? Oh, uh, that, that was a. <laughs> I'd never heard of it before yesterday either. Um, that was a free 2D platformer. Uh, I think Super Meat Boy ish sort of puzzly platformer. Yeah, you uh, looked. Was, I stopped by a couple of times. You looked rather angry. Blood pressure was rising for sure, but <laughs> but it's entirely hand drawn. Um, it's so it's like a like a little indie game, and there's like like no options menu, like it's full screen or nothing, buddy. No no sound adjustment, nothing. It's just the menu is like resume game, end game. That's it. 
but it was, you know, I got to points where I would get frustrated and I would just work through it and get through the next thing. And then you go through two or three that's really easy. You're like, oh, I'm getting the hang of this. And all of a sudden, dead, 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 dead. But it's very, it reminded me more of, it looks uh, a little reminiscent of Ori in the Blind Forest, not art style, beautiful, but um, just sort of the way things you, you look and dash around and the way you jump. But then when you get into it, it's, it's way more Super Meat Boy. What, so I, was, I guess we should give cool. people the name if they want to check it out. It is free. What's it called? Oh, yeah. Uh, crap. Plokoth? Plokoth, yeah. I'm looking at it on Steam. It, is, it does yeah. look pretty. P-L-O-K, right? Yep. Yeah, O-T-H. O-T-H. Oh, yeah. That was the other thing about Infinite Lagrange. It doesn't even have a category on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> a show, or on, 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 on Twitch, rather. I'm not going to lie, before I messaged Mike and said I wanted to play that game, I went to Twitch to make sure that it had a Yeah, it had one. It had one. I was like, well, if it has a category on Twitch, then I can play it. Time I've never to play seen that before. Like, even, even the lowest tier, crappiest indie game with like three players has a category on Twitch. I've never played a game that didn't have a category. <laughs> so. Well, there you go. Some games to check out. Go watch the gameplay action on Space Punk. See if you want to play that. Uh, po Pocloth? Plokoth. Plokoth. Plokoth, if you want to, you know, get angry and infinite Take Lagrange. Take your blood pressure medication first. Yeah. Infinite Lagrange, if you're looking for something to PC slash mobile and do a Clash of Clans type thing in space. A couple things for you to check out until, uh, uh, let's slide over to the Weekly Blob. Gentlemen, I don't know what to give yet. Now, I know this is a free-to-play gaming show. You all know that we're trying to get the owner to do other stuff and uh, open it up to multiplayer, so I'm just bringing the topic. I don't care. I don't care. And sometimes we do anyway on this, on this particular show. I, I don't know what kind of bomb to give New World yet. Uh, I played in the betas last year when they decided they weren't going to release yet. I played earlier this year, I think, and then played in, current, in the current beta that's running now. I streamed it on Ready Check Radio on Wednesday. I don't know what to give it. Like, I don't know if it's the bomb, I will actually try this some more, or if it's an A-bomb because it's just boring. Like, I am stuck in the middle on this one. And I think part of the problem is the fact that I've done the same thing like four or five times now. Uh, because of all the character wipes and and, and things like that and uh, between the beta tests. So that's kind of probably grading on me a little bit, you know, getting to new light and picking a faction and then doing, you know, farming some stuff to learn how to harvest and go fishing. And, you know, that kind of stuff gets boring. It is typical start MMO. That said, there are aspects of the game that I do like so far, and I do want to continue to play to get to the dungeons and things like that, but I don't want to do it now <laughs> when, it's, when it's just going to be wiped and I'm going to have to do all this shit again. So I'm like very unmotivated to play in the New World beta any more than I have. Not because I'm not enjoying it, just because I'm not looking forward to having to do it for like the sixth freaking time when the game actually launches in August. That said, there are things I absolutely hate about it and I think are lazy. Uh, your character's jump is stupid. Your character's jump is just stupid. It is the worst. <laughs> it is just absolutely dumb. Absolutely dumb. If you're standing still and you jump, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. If you're moving and you jump, the animation is dumb. And you don't jump. It looks like your character stumbled. It just stumbled forward. And I can't decide if I like the art style or not. I definitely, and Jason, this was something you and I talked about when it was first showcased on the Video Game Awards all those years ago. We like the idea of the setting. This kind of, you know, almost new world, uh, you know, settlers type environment, right? Everything built out of wood and big pirate ships and, and stuff like that. We both liked that, the conquistador look to it and things like that. But I got to say, it's not exactly the best-looking, visually impressive game. That's not to say that there aren't some neat settings or overviews or, you know, lookouts or anything. But there are some really dumb textures, too. Like, it just looked lazy. Uh, so I got to take with the good with the bad right now and just say, I don't know. 
I don't know what bomb to give this. I want it to do well, even if it's not a game that I like, because I like the idea of having Amazon as a game company. I like that idea, not their execution so far, but the idea of somebody with those types of pockets in the industry. I think that's a good thing or could be a good thing. So I want this to do well, even if I don't end up enjoying it. But I got to say that it also just feels all rather run of the mill. And there are some aspects of it that I feel like are just rushed or lazy for a game that just had another year of delay. It's really bizarre. So yeah, I'm going to, meh, I don't know. Bomb. New world. Troy, what do you got? As someone who's played New World for the first time uh, this go around, uh, Amazon Game Studios, you have finally done it. Da bomb to New World. I'm having an absolute blast. Combat is fun. Uh, it's not. It's simplistic. It's there's nothing you know extravagantly hard. It or, feels like or Elder Scrolls dumbed down a little. To me, it feels like what Elder Scrolls should have been. Really. Uh, Elder Scrolls is the worst combat in all of MMO. What are you talking about? Well, I will say, the well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold forth. on. First I'm, I'm off, Elder Scrolls, you guys go Elder Scrolls is not the worst combat in MMO. Elder Scrolls Online is the worst no, combat in all of MMO. No, not by far. It is not boring, far. repetitive, not by far. And not by far. dull, and lazy. Not you want to talk about far. lazy? Elder Scrolls Online's combat was lazy design. Lazy. And yet, you think New Worlds isn't. New Worlds is interesting. It's what fun. Are it's you satisfying. talking about? New you Worlds mean it's fun combat. and satisfying. Everything feels like a wild bat swing. I'm playing sword and board, bro, and I'm so having am a blast. I. I'm playing hammer. I'm having a blast knocking the crap out of mobs, flatting them to the ground, and beating the crap. I out actually of them. don't have, by the way, any real big problem with New Worlds combat. I do kind of <laughs> enjoy it. It just, just for me, it feels a little more simplistic than. Elder Scrolls, oh, it's, it's but I will, simplistic. I will, yeah. I, I, I will say on that front that uh, it's hard for me to compare to because I play ranged magic user in Elder Scrolls Online and sword and board melee user, and obviously those are going to feel different anyway. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, it's it's not bad. I don't think it's like groundbreaking or anything, but no, I, it's no. not bad anyway. Go ahead. Never said that. Yep. Definitely, it's definitely not groundbreaking. It's nothing new. It's nothing that you're like, oh my God, this is the greatest combat ever. That's not what I'm saying. It's fun. It's satisfying. Uh, not intricate. It's very simplistic, but it's fun. When you're out in the world exploring and you're not focusing on, um, it's, it's not a rotation. It's reaction to what's going on around you, especially in sword and board. I love, I actually need to throw up my shield, block some damage, and then I've got time to sneak in a few swipes and maybe an ability here and there. That is super fun being more reactive than worried about what my stupid rotation is. Because even in ESO, that's action combat, but it's your rotation. Yeah, it's, it's heavily and rotation. The, and yeah, it's it's your your cast ability, then it's your light attack, and it's your cast ability, it's your light attack, it's another yeah, cast ability, it's your light attack. It's, yeah, it's spam weaving is all ESO is, and it doesn't matter what class or what weapon you play, that's how you play ESO. This is very different. The hammers are are slower with different with the diff, different abilities, and they each have unique animations, and they have animation chains. So it's not the same freaking animation every time you hit the light attack. They will at least, except for the pike. The pike is all stabby, which is boring, and that sucks. But whatever. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna make one more comparison to ESO, and not because the game is like ESO. It's because when I first played ESO back in the betas and stuff, I was one of the people who was defending that game at the time. Because the base of that game, what they had at the core, was going to make a great game if they expanded up on it and kept coming out with content and expanding upon what they originally had. ESO did that. They're one of the biggest games out there right now. This game has the same thing. It has a great base foundation that is fun to play. Now you need to create more interesting gameplay loops. You've got like three different quest styles right now. There, that gets a little repetitive. Yes, absolutely. But be able to, I'm just running around questing, right? And right now the faction I'm in has control of one of the zones. When that zone becomes under attack from another faction, you just boom, jump in, switch to PVP. You got to go defend that fort because your whole faction is getting bonuses just because one guild controls that whole zone. Everybody in your faction benefits, so everybody's got a reason to go defend that fort from, from everybody else. It's a lot of fun. And don't let other people tell you otherwise. They've made a good game this time. Yeah, I'm not ready to say it's not fun yet. I'm not there. Not there. I just don't know if it's a ton of fun yet. I'm kind of... but. 
maybe I'm jaded because you've done this once. I've had to do it like five or six times. I'm kind of sick of picking my factions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jason, this is my first go. Keep that in mind. What do you got, Jason? My very first go. Oh, oh it's my turn? Yeah, oh, your oh, turn. Oh, your turn. Okay. Oh, your turn. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, A-bomb. Uh-huh. A-bomb to Pokemon Unite. You like something? No, a bomb. A bomb. Oh, we need the sign. My oh my Jesus. god. Oh. A bomb to Pokemon Unite for the yeah. There you go. There you go. Need to update that, but still. Uh, that's the Pokemon MOBA that just came out this last week, and it's already unpopular for its cash shop being done by some people as pay to win. Me just as put pay to progress at a decent rate. I guess is how I'd put it more. Because they have their their in-game currency, but they have, and you use that to buy various stuff, including new Pokemon. You can use real money, of course. It's not a big deal. That happens a lot. But they put a limit on how much of the in-game currency you can earn per week, womp, which means womp. it takes somewhere around four to five weeks to earn a Pokemon, no matter how much you play, because they only let you earn so much of the in-game stuff, which is horrendous and well deserving of an A bomb. Definitely yeah. a little womp womp. Yeah. Uh, from the viewers, Old Glory saying, A bomb to Blizzard. That's all. Mm-hmm. Ninja Pandas, I'm giving a dub bomb to the heat for finally going away and cooling down, and to Final Fantasy XIV two week free trial for pulling me back in. Terra Nova saying, A bomb to Activision Blizzard. Nothing more to say. Sigh. Nasagra, da bomb to Yoshi P and the Final Fantasy XIV team for how they responded to the server issues. I wish more game companies had the guts to be that transparent. That's just his, you know, that's just the style since he's been the man. Actually, if you want to talk about being transparent with server issues in the, the arena net thing on Guild Wars 2 that he just put out. Uh, yeah, that's right. We, last week, that was pretty good too. Yeah, they were super trans. Like that was unusually transparent yeah. for arena net. Um, <laughs> like, and I, that is literally what I said when I sent Jason the link to it. Granted, it's a year later they're putting it right. out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kitsuruha says the bomb for cool looking Steam handheld. Triple A bomb for the pricing. Question of the week, Kitsuruha. Playing as a streamer, not watching too many streams lately and never really had a fave, so it has to be nah. nah. So follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. <laughs> Jason Winter <laughs> plugging himself. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so Chorus 1 says I saw that graph for Path of Vegas all about the increasing power levels for each expansion. And I came to the conclusion that grinding gear games might not know how to make a game. <laughs> the games that have to rebalance themselves after a few years to reduce the power levels of the characters, like WoW or Final Fantasy XIV, it's because they are persistent games where you play the same character and advance them over the expansions. PoE isn't like that. You make a new character each season like Diablo three. Why are they increasing power for characters that get reset every season? I mean, they're not increasing the characters. They have to they have to put out the items that people will want to get then. It's, it's, it's that kind of power creep. Think of it more like a CCG, how they get power creep, because if you don't, if you have a card, you have to make a card that's better than that if people want to put it in their deck and take out the previous card. So I think it's more like that. Troy. Akio, Path of Exile Battle Royale. Oh, my God, lol. It's a thing. Uh, Box says, giving out two A-bombs this week. The first is going to Mike himself. What the hell did I do now? Uh, for mentioning on his Square Enix podcast, the Kingdom Hearts Ultimania art book, and I just had to oh. buy it. All right, well, there you go. Uh, totally worth it, but darn you for mentioning that it exists. Second one uh, would be going to Gamigo, since it's always fun to bash them. I won some kind of a free giveaway they did with the Dollars for Trees deal they did back in January. Got an email from them in February letting me know I won and asking for an address to send said items to. Well, skip all these months later, radio silence, along with no items. I've made two (laughs) tickets regarding this now, and both have been mysteriously closed almost a day or two after being opened. Thanks for proving you're just as much as a joke company as Tryon is, Gamigo. Very, very classy. Jason, what did you bolt away for? This this Kingdom Hearts Ultimate. Yeah, that's it. You bought it too, huh? I did not. uh, Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. I was like, you... You don't. You're not a huge Kingdom Hearts guy. Why'd you get that? <laughs> no, but they are r slash were. Uh, question of the week. Last week, uh, would you play an avatar in game of your favorite streamer? Why or why not? And if so, who do you want to see in that game? None of you answered except for Kitsuruha, and that's fine. That's fine. Just be that way. 
Then when I stop doing the question of the week, I don't want to hear anybody complain. Okay. Uh, question of the week. It was a dumb question. It, it was. It, it's a dumb thing. Just yeah, it was time. a dumb thing. It was a dumb Again, thing. though, you can follow me at TwitchRTV slash Jason Winter and get me into the game. Question of the week this week should be a little better, though, for you. Should MMORPGs, like actually specifically MMORPGs when they're being developed, should they cater to solo players or make servers aimed directly at solo players? Why or why not? This has always kind of been like a debate in some circles. It's an MMORPG. Group content. But they're making solo friendly. Like, should that be a design philosophy? Making things solo friendly. Let us know in the comments below on YouTube or on MMOBomb.com. Don't forget your weekly bombs while you're there. Dub bomb for something good. A bomb for something bad in the world of gaming or life in general. And if you have a question for the panel, go ahead and throw it down there. Until next week, Troy, where can everybody find you, sir? You know what? Right here every Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb. I'm streaming free-to-play games. Come by, hang out. I like to talk, so just hit me up with questions in chat, and I'll completely quit playing a game and start talking to the camera because I can't do both at the same time. <laughs> Jason. Find me on Twitter at Winter Informal and stream on Twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. Also, don't forget to, you want to mention the poll at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Today well, starts final the four. final four in our yeah. best free-to-play game in quarantine. Who are the final four games? Uh, Warframe. Okay, not surprised there. Fantasy Star Online 2. Kind of maybe a little surprised, yeah, but not really. Path of Exile. No, I'm not, not surprised, surprised, yeah. Not surprised at all. And then it's either Dota 2 or Apex Legends. we got like one more hour to vote on that if you want to get into it. Uh, but then the yeah. first of the two final four matches will go up later today. Yes, that'll be Warframe and uh, PSO 2. Ooh, that should be a good one. I, should, I think Warframe's going to take it. I mean, I, my heart wants PSO to win, but I think Warframe will take it. Yeah, make sure you get over there and vote. My name is Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at MagicMan1, but more importantly, follow at MMOBomb so we can tweet at you every time we go live or post a new free-to-play cast, first look video, news, articles, interviews, giveaways, and more. Stay safe, and we'll see you on the servers.